Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here for ADIS reInvent 2023. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, extracting the signal from the noise with our studio, pumping out the content in Palo Alto. We're here on location. 11th year with theCUBE here at reInvent. It's been a great year, and this year marks the big step up with generative AI, and just overall price performance focused, really bringing that next generation developer uh, mindset, and then feeding frenzy soon to be on these LLMs, foundation models. We've got a great guest here, Ed Enough, CP, Chief Product Officer of DataStax, CUBE alumni, great to see you. We've talked product management in the cloud for a long time on theCUBE with you. We've been great, doing this a long time. Great yes. to have you ba back, back, have you back. Yeah, same, same. So big news, you guys' relationship with Bedrock, um, Astro, you guys got some news. Let's get right to the hard news. Sure, so you know what we are talking about here at the conference has been the fact that we've taken AstroDB, which is our cloud database built on top of Cassandra. So it brings you all the power and scale of Cassandra. It's the database that powers Netflix, Apple, Federal Express, and all that. Earlier this year, we made it vector powered. So you have all that power, you have all that scale, but all the power of being able to do vector similarity search, and vector is, you know, the native language of LLMs. So if you're building AI, you've got your LLMs talking to your data, which every business wants to do, um, you know, it's a great match. But, you know, the key piece to that, the missing ingredient was Bedrock letting you to get, have access to these models, um, you know, in a powerful open way. And so we've built that integration and we're talking about it here at the show. So choice and open, is always a good formula for success. Definitely. They, that, they hit a home run with that, I, I'd say. Now, but the model's coming on fast. Yes. Their job is to create a model scenario where developers are going to be in that. It's the layer two of yeah. their, quote, Gen AI stack, which we reported on SiliconANGLE, and they presented. What's that mean for developers? What has to happen? Because, you know, to me, my first reaction was, oh, this is going to be a feeding frenzy. Yes, <laughs> people are going to be kicking the tires, but the data management model is going to be upside down because you want to have everything close to the data store, then you want to put stuff around it. Yeah. Low latency packets, but also low latency time to value on answers. Yeah. This yeah. is a big part of the new equation. Well, I think, you know, we've been saying it for a while, but it's been great to see it at the conference that everybody's caught up with this, that AI and Gen AI, once you get past sort of the cool experiments, and you know, we all love that stuff, and ChatGPT and so on, but the key piece for business is, how do I make AI work with my data? And like you said, it's got to be low, it's got to be low latency. You've got to be able to go and deal with the entirety of the data that runs your business, making it available to these language models. And you've got to be able to capture all these interactions to be able to build history with your users, to be able to detect hallucinations and correct them. So it's, uh, it's a pattern that's called RAG, uh, Retrieval Augmented Generation. You probably have heard a lot about yeah. it at mm -hmm. the conference. It, it's, <laughs> uh, this is, it's, it's funny because it started off at the beginning of the year, it's just this funny term and now, you know, you've got a lot, it, it, it's, it's in the it's, keynote. It's in the keynote, <laughs> exactly, exactly. How far have we come, damn. Yes. <laughs> so when you, thinking about the LLM optionality that is obviously front and center at the show, yeah. how do you think about and what are you finding with the different LLMs and, and, and what are the sort of dimensions and the critical sort of factors that you use to determine you know, whether it's cost, whether it's speed, whether it's accuracy, and, and how are you adjudicating that in your system? So, it's all the ones you listed and one very important one, which is cost. And so, those are the trade-offs that we see our users or the developers, um, you know, at any level of scale, which is that right now, you're trying to find that sort of Goldilocks zone of how do I get the best possible relevance at a cost that lets me go and bring this out to as many of my users, whether it's my employees in a call center application, or whether it's something I'm putting on my website as a shopping assistant, but I need to be able to push a lot of data through this, and these LLMs are, are not all created equal in terms of cost, and so people are experimenting with small models, there's a number of open models, a lot of stuff that we see on Hugging Face, and then a lot of the great foundation models that you saw Amazon talking about um, from partners and that they've developed, and uh, you know whether it's Anthropic or OpenAI, all of those are choices that people have. What we try to do from an architecture standpoint is let you go and easily switch between them in any situation, in all those situations, you're bringing your data to the model, but we're giving you that optionality to tune it so that it gives you the right relevancy, the right accuracy at the right cost that makes this possible for whatever it is you're trying to do with your business. So one of the concerns that customers had, and sort of epiphanies when 
the cloud was kind of the wild, wild west, is, oh wow, I got my bill. Yes. I didn't expect that. And so then we had a lot of emphasis on whether it was optimization or FinOps, et cetera. Yes. Is there a similar dynamic, Ed, with the LLMs? In other words, can the AI help you choose the right oh. LLM? Uh, that's a good question. There are some folks working on that. Um, I think right now the, the challenge is that every business, and I, I talk to Fortune 500, I talk to startups, every business is going and figuring out how do I inject the LLM into my core experience, into my business model, and there's a ton of great ways to do that. And then they go and say, okay, um, you know, can I get the technology right? Can I get it to work within my business model? And, you know, and then what will it look like when I put this into production? And right now, the reality is there's a ton of great stuff, but a lot of it is in the early stages, and as they get closer to going and putting it out, that's when the cost starts to, to kick in. They're like, this is great. We, we built a fantastic demo to show to our investors or our board of directors and everything, and they get it, and we're now green lighting it, and now the question is, how do we, you know, how do we put this into production? Um, I don't know that it's a situation as of, of going and saying, do I need a, a model to help me build the cost model? Um, although, as I said, people are doing that. I think it's more of a case of, is it aligned with the infrastructure that I already have, mm -hmm. and the cost models and the operational models. And that's why, for us, the stuff here, obviously AWS is, you know, the, the giant here, and for most people that have their systems in production, they're doing it on AWS, it's very important for us to make sure that we're tied in with that system because next year and the year after that, we're moving from experiment into production, and these are the systems that they're going to use to do that. And one of the things we've seen from the spending data is, is still, most people are still in experimentation, although it's starting to, to uptick yes. and there's some fast ROI, but we've noticed that there was a very high correlation between a, a, a product going a GA and then the adoption yeah. rising right after. We certainly saw that with ChatGPT and OpenAI tools, but you also saw it with Vertex AI. Yes. And then Bedrock just re recently went GA. Now you got obviously advanced access to it. Yes. So have you seen that similar dynamic? What are you seeing from, from uptake? Because we totally expect that Bedrock is just you know, going to explode. Well, I think that the, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a really good question. It's one of the things that all of us within the industry are, are looking at because you know, this has been one of the most exciting times, by the way, I, I've been doing this you know, for, for too long, uh, uh, you know, it, just in, in Silicon Valley. And just in terms of the pace of innovation this year, it's been unlike any other time. So we have shipped so much stuff, it is, a, uh, you know, probably for me as a, somebody as a in product management, one of the most satisfying times because it's just, uh, you know. Uh, the appetite. Get, exactly, the <laughs> appetite, because you've got to have the pull. Yeah. You've got to have the pull. Um, so, uh, you know, the GA designation is a powerful signal to customers that this stuff is ready for prime time, at least on our end. Now, what's more important, of course, is are the customers, are the enterprises, are the businesses ready for prime time with what they're doing? And they're still working on it. Um, there are a whole bunch of Vanguard folks that are the early adopters, and by the way, in some of the largest companies we talk to, there are a few of them, particularly in a few markets, retail, we've actually seen it in healthcare, believe it or not, um, because there's so much content generation yeah. that's necessary in there. Um, uh, folks that have gone into production this year, but the lion's share of them are going to be over, over the next several quarters. You're going to see where people, people are getting yeah. this stuff out there. Ed, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. I know time's tight, yeah. uh, but let's follow up. Definitely. Congratulations on the, on the news and the success. Um, final question for you, for the folks watching, why is the data store and the vectors together a better scenario than keeping them separate? What's the, what's the net net here? Well, look, ultimately, your large language model, uh, unless you're just building an experiment, right? Unless you're just trying to show off how cool an LLM is, which by the way, is an acceptable part of the learning journey, which many people are at. <laughs> but once you get down to it, it's only as powerful to your business. The impact to your business is going to be dependent on it working with the data, right? So, you know, for example, one of our customers, Priceline, that went live, they are building an AI-powered travel agent. They use the data, they use the travel history, they use your personal profile in order to have an assistant that can give you a personalized um, vacation, right? That's all the data that's in the systems. If you go and say, I'm going to have a different system for the vectors and for my core data, now you're not going to be able to bring those things into a common yeah. experience. So we see that as a natural convergence point. 
Great, and strategic relationship with AWS, co-selling, co-marketing, multi-year, uh, congratulations. Yes. All right, yeah. thanks for coming on. Okay, Thank so you. CUBE coverage, back to the studio. We'll be back with, uh, after this short break. <laughs>